Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast App Spotlight. You are listening to the podcast that brings you the best in educational technology right from the app developers themselves. Thank you so much for making TeacherCast your home for professional development. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and if this is the first time you're listening to the show today, thank you so much. We're glad to have you here. There's, of course, several ways that you can check out our show each and every week. We love it when you follow us on Twitter, at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email at feedback at teachercast.net. And of course, you can subscribe to this audio and video show over on teachercast.net slash iTunes and teachercast.net slash YouTube. Now, over the last little bit here on TeacherCast, we've been talking a lot about digital citizenship and internet safety. And today I have a special guest with us on the TeacherCast app spotlight that knows all about internet safety. And she has a fantastic resource that can help you and your students create a safe, email address so that way we can learn a little bit about digital safety I want to bring on our show today Brittany from kidsemail.org Brittany how are you today welcome to the show I'm doing great thanks so much for having me today thank you so much for being here talk to us a little bit about kids email how did it get started and 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 why is this an important resource for educators um, kids email has been around actually since 2009 um, we started it as a partnership with one of our other programs we have, which is called My Kids Browser, which is a safe browser for kids. And we found that parents wanted to have their kids to be able to communicate with their family and loved ones. And so we actually built a kids email platform um, to kind of correlate with that. Um, and since then, kids email has just been an awesome way for parents and teachers to, to have their students connect, but learn how to use technology in a safe environment. So. Um, we have been around for a while, but we continue to grow, and, and that's us. So, And let's take a look at where we can find out more information here. The website, of course, is kidsemail.org. Talk to us a little bit about what we can find here on the website. Okay, great. Um, yeah, on the website, we actually um, have an offer for parents and, or teachers to try our services completely free. Um, we have a place on there where you can find features about our um, our site, the different tools that we have to offer. We have um, the ability for kids to use kids email on the go, which is really cool. Um, we're now available on Android and iOS apps. So um, as you're teaching your child how to use these devices, um, kids email can be on there as a way for them to connect. Um, so you can find all our cool features. We have a parent login, a child login, and then a teen login for those that don't want to be associated as a child with a little bit older, an older interface on there. So Now, when you're signing up for kidsemail.org, is this a brand new email address or can a parent sign up for a, a third party email address and bring it to here? This would be for a brand new email address. So the parent would actually be choosing a new email address with their child. Um, since we are not as big as something like Gmail, we actually have a huge variety of names available. And a lot of kids are able to get the email address that they actually want. And then their email address would be whatever they choose at kidsemail.org or at kmail.org, depending on what they choose. Talk to us a little bit about some of these parent features. I, I know when you're looking at a student, well, first of all, let me ask you this. What age should a student get an email address? You know, we're finding that most parents are signing their kids up for an email address around ages five to six, which is actually quite surprising, and it is young. But kids are more connected now at a younger age. So um, generally our ages, are, like I said, is about five to 13 is when children or parents decide to use our services. And 
talk to us a little bit about the security features. I mean, is this something where a student can sign up for third party emails that, that come in? I mean, what what kind of security features do you have set up in place for this? It's actually really cool. Um, the parents can, can modify the safety settings depending on what they want. So if a parent chooses, they can have um, only certain people email their children and vice versa, their child can only email certain people. Um, or they can leave that open and they can choose to monitor what's coming and going. And if they see something they don't want to go to their child, they can actually stop that in what we call a mail queue. Um, there's other cool features too, like we have a block sender function. So say, you know, you have somebody that keeps emailing your child and you want that to stop, you can have that um, be blocked. And then um, we don't offer any advertising, so there's not going to be anything that your child will see that will be inappropriate. Um, and on the flip side of that as well, we have a huge spam filter. So um, messages that are inappropriate by that via email that sometimes come through, I get them myself in my own personal email outside of kids' email. Um, I don't want my child to be able to see those. So to know that your child is only going to be seeing things that you approve is actually really cool. So um, some other things that we have um, is a GPS tracker tool that parents can enable if they want to on the Android or iOS app. Um, and they can see a historical location of where their kids have been uh, if they choose to turn that feature on. And then some of the other cool things, um, we have an offensive word filter. So if you know bad words are coming or going, those will be taken out, as well as the ability for parents to remove um, links or images if they choose. They don't want their children to receive images um, that can be taken out as well. So just kind of, we have a lot of really cool features. And like I said, it, it's something that if you only want part of them, you can have part of them. If you want all of them, you can have all of them. You can customize it to your needs. Now, I know you have the desktop version. We're going to look at, at a demo of that shortly. And you have the Apple and the Android version. Can the student also receive this email, say, from their mail app on their iPhone, or is it only going to be able to be used through the kids' email native app? Yeah, the kids' email is actually going to be able to use directly through the web or through the app, um, but it is just like a normal email address. So if they want to set up something like, say, FaceTime or an iTunes account or something like that, those it can still be used as like a normal email account. Well, let's get into this. Can you give us a little demonstration of how kids' email is going to work? I sure can. All right. So this is kidsemail.org. Um, this is the main page that you would go to to check things out. Um, as I had mentioned, we have a try it for free where you can click and um, register for an account. The one thing that's really cool is we don't require any payment information up front. So you can actually try it with no obligation. And then once you sign up, you would actually go to this parent login button, and I'm just going to go back on screen on this main page here. Let's go ahead and log in. And once you're logged in, um, I already have my children set up, but I'll just show you real quick how you would add a child. So you would just click on this button here on the top, click on add a child. Um, you would select the email address that you want for your child, and we'll just choose one today. Happy day is available and their password, and then the child's name. Then you would select if they are a boy or girl. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier as well, we have options for older kids. So at this point, you can choose if you want your child to have an email address that is at kidsemail.org or at kmail.org. So I'm going to go ahead and say that my child would like more grown-up options. So we'll click on that, and then it will just confirm for you here that your email address is going to be happyday at kmail.org and you'd add the child. Once you add a child into your account, then it will take you to the safety settings page where you can actually um, choose which safety settings you want. Now we have everything set as a default by the way that things are most set up in most accounts, but like I said, those can be changed. So. Um, you can choose whether to receive the mail from the contact list only, so that would be only people that you add into the contact list. Um, you can send email notification when emails go into the mail queue or get copy of incoming messages. So you can select that. You can remove links or images and allow attachments. And um, the attachment function is kind of cool because you can open it here. And
and see that you can actually modify what attachments you want your child to get. So if there's only certain things you want them to get, you can select that on here. Um, option to filter out bad words, send mail to contact list only, and then if you want your child to be able to allow, or allow your child to edit the contact list. Um, one other thing we have available is some parents both want to be copied on incoming and outgoing messages. So here you have the option to go ahead and add any additional emails that you want to get on those notifications. And then you would just update that for the child. So it's really easy, um, pretty simple and painless. And then we have an option here on the left that you can go ahead and click on to manage contacts. And here you can add um, you know, the different contacts. Let's make up an email here. And um, you can add that in. You can select a photo so when your child is sending the email or gets the email, they can actually see a message from um, or the picture from their grandma. Uh, we also have a place for you where you can go and modify the look and feel of the account so the child can choose from all these different backgrounds. Um, we'll just choose the dog for today. Uh, we also have some features that I didn't mention earlier. We have a ground child feature. So say that your child has been naughty and you want to um, not allow them to actually use their email for a specific duration, you can go on here and change that. And then when the child tries to log into their account, it will give them a message uh, reminding them that they're grounded and that they can come back when the time is approved. So that's kind of cool. Um, we also have a time restrictions. So if you don't want your child, you know, logging in at, 2, 3 a.m. in the morning to check emails or send emails, you can change that on here as well. Um, there's also a block senders function. Somebody you don't want to contact your child, you can add them in there. Um, and then we have a mail queue. And the mail queue, you can choose to have all the messages come to the mail queue, or you can have them um, only come if they're not somebody in their approved contact list. So here, um, you would get email notification that says, from your child's been emailed, check the mail queue with a link. You come into here and you can either approve, so we'll go ahead and approve this message and go through, or you can delete any messages that you don't want to go to your child. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then we also have activity logs. So if you're wanting to see when the children or child is logging into the account, you can actually go ahead and, and check that out, which is kind of cool. Um, next, I'm actually going to show you inside a child's account. So over here on the left, We'll go ahead and log into Jenny's account. And we do that by selecting her name and then clicking on child account settings. Um, here you can change the picture for the child, their password, um, any of the settings that you want. And you can actually log into the child's account if you want from this parental control area. So we're going to go ahead and log in. So the interface is really simple for children, which we found is important because kids, um, they don't need all the complex functionality. So um, we have an ability just click on write email, um, they go to their contacts, we're going to email Timothy and send an email. Um, another cool thing that the kids like is we have these little fun images and then we also have a drawing pad which is available on the web and then on the Android and iOS versions as well. So if the kids are a little bit younger and they just want to say send a message to grandma and grandpa, um, they can do that simply by just doing that and they would attach a drawing and that would um, apply to the messages sent to the person. So go ahead and send the email. And the email has been sent. So that is it. It's really, really simple, um, not meant to be complicated at all. And um, I think because of the simplicity of it, both parents and kids love it. You know, Brittany, I love the fact that you have all these parental controls, and I, I didn't know about that. I really do like that whole drawing feature to it. That's that's really, really neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool because we, I mean, it works for kids of all ages. You know, Brittany, there's a lot of neat features there designed for parents and students to take advantage of. The idea that a parent can set up an email address for their students to, you know, maybe just communicate with, with grandma, moms, aunts, things like that. That's really, really helping to empower students and become digital citizenship. And I really love the fact that you're able to control the email that's coming in so that way if spam does happen to get through or if your students do happen to sign up for something that you really don't approve of, you have those options. 
that's that's an amazing, amazing thing that you have there. Thank you. Yeah, it's really cool, and it's it's actually helped a lot of parents and teachers prevent um, those unnecessary things from going to their children, which is really cool. So. How do you see people using this in real world situations? Do you see a lot of the older kids getting access to this? Is there more younger kids using this? Do you ask what their ages are? You know what? We don't ask the specific age of a child. Um, most of it has been just from personal feedback or feedback with some of the customers. Um, ages vary completely. Like I said, from me to ages five to 13, um, it's being used today you know, really to keep kids connected. Um, there's a lot of people that have family overseas or out of the country. Um, we get feedback all the time from parents that travel that love to be able to connect with their kids um, and not have to, to text or have their kids have a phone. They can do it simply through the email process. Um, it's also used a lot in schools, um, which has been really cool because teachers have been able to allow their kids to communicate within the classroom and work on projects and um, be completely um, conscious that their, their kids are going to be safe. Because like you had mentioned, the spam filters um, can't always be 100%. So we catch those items through that mail queue, and they, then they can you know, make sure that they don't get those inappropriate messages. So um, also another thing that it's used widely through is actually through a lot of homeschoolers. Um, homeschoolers are finding that it's been a fun way for kids and makes them a little bit more excited about sending in homework because they can do stuff online and then they can email their homework assignments and things to their, their parents. So there's just a lot of different very, you know, ways to use email. Obviously, people know what email is, but the kids love it and use it. So Talk to us a little bit about the expandability. Let's say that I'm using it with my student. He gets to be ages 11, 12, wants to get a, a Gmail address, or maybe he gets into a school that's giving him an address. Can the student or can you as the parent take the email address and migrate it into a more advanced account as the, as the student gets older? You know, unfortunately, we don't have the capability to, to migrate to, say, a Gmail account. Um, but the beauty of kids' email is that you can introduce your kids to technology. They can start out with the email address um, at kidsemail.org, and then they can actually, the parents uh, can switch over the account to an older interface. So when my daughter turned 12, she no longer wanted to be associated as a kid. So um, we thought, what a brilliant idea. Let's allow the kids to still use the um, email service, but to feel a little bit older. So they can actually switch their existing account to at kmail.org, sorry about that, to at kmail.org, and um, they can still use the email through a little bit, you know, past, like, the teen's age, and we actually have, because of the switch, a lot of parents that their children are okay with still using the safe email um, because they don't feel like they're associated with the child, and then, yes, um, after, you know, 14, 15, a lot of the kids do move on, but then at that point, parents feel like they can trust what their children are doing because they've had the proper education beforehand. So, I, I think it's great. If you're out there, check out certainly kidsemail.org. Um, Brittany, where can we find out more information? How do we find you guys on your social media channels? You know, we are on every social media channel, and it's super easy to find us. If you just look at anything at Kids Email. Um, you can find us Twitter, Facebook, just search at kids email and you will find us. We're um, a huge provider. We're known worldwide and we would love for you to come find us. Excellent. Kidsemail.org. Brittany, thank you so much for checking us out today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, my friends, that wraps up another episode of the TeacherCast App Spotlight. I want to thank again our friends from kidsemail.org for coming on the show and joining us today. I hope you certainly take a moment to check them out. There's, of course, several great ways that you can connect and be a part of our broadcast each week. We love it when you find us on Twitter, at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail at teachercast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at teachercast.net. And of course, subscribe and review our shows over on teachercast.net slash iTunes and teachercast.net slash YouTube. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today on the TeacherCast App Spotlight. Until next time, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. Today's presentation is brought to you by storyboard.com. 
Storyboard That is the leading storyboard creator for classrooms of all grades and subject areas. Storyboard That provides a simple, drag-and-drop experience with thousands of well-designed artwork to quickly create great-looking storyboards. This lets students really focus on what they want to say and unleash their creativity. With tons of pre-made teacher guides, Storyboard That gives lots of examples for common core aligned activities like breaking apart Shakespeare, practicing vocabulary, or conjugating verbs for language class. Sign up for free at storyboardthat.com or check out teachercast.net slash storyboard that to take advantage of our 25% discount when you sign up for an educator account. Once again, that's teachercast.net slash storyboard that.